All right, so now we'll be beginning the second part, which talk about the sorting algorithm. Uh, the very first type of the sorting algorithm follows what we have previously when we introduced the searching algorithm. Uh, we follow the linear principle. Uh, the linear principle that's been applied in linear search basically uh, exploit this, uh, this idea where you begin uh, at the very beginning of the collection, you systematically run through that particular collection until you have processed each and every element, right? And you hope that at the end of this processing, uh, this final result will achieve what you want. In the search case, you want the element either reported or reported to be not inside the collection. But in the case of the sorting, of course, uh, we want to ensure that uh, after you have finished the process, the collection, the list is fully sorted. Right, so this method is actually called the insertion sort. And the reason for this name will come out uh, clearly in the next few slides. Uh, the basic idea over here is that uh, if a particular list currently is not sorted, what you do is that you just pick up an item and you find the place that it belongs to in the sorted part of the list. Right? Usually we'll use the left hand side of the list to represent that portion. So you pick that item that's not sorted yet try to find the right place to insert that particular item such that the uh, the sorted portion of the list stays sorted right and then you you just continue down the line until you have processed each and every element right and it, so you can see uh this is the reason why uh, this particular sorting algorithm is called insertion sort and this is also the reason uh, why we consider this as a linear based approach comparable to linear search. So one of the very important property, if you follow this idea is that uh, the left part of the list is always sorted. Okay. So uh, again, very similar to the previous terminology, uh, the item that we are currently processing, uh, we call it the key. And we always assume following the principle that's up here, we always assume that the item that's to the left of this key are already sorted. And the goal, of course, uh, because of that, is to insert this particular key to the right place, such that that portion, that sorted portion, will stay sorted. Let's uh, use uh, uh, one more formal way to describe the insertion sort algorithm. So initial key is always the second item in the list. In the, if you look at the this hand up card, it basically means uh, the queue, right? We use the second item as a start because the first item is automatically sorted, right? You only have a single item after all. So you pick up the key starting from the second item. You try to move it, move this key to as left as possible, right? So the right place that you can move until is that you just keep trying to move the, the key to the left hand side until you find a particular element that is smaller than uh, the key that you hold on hand right because assuming that you want to sort the list to follow the ascending order when after you encounter an element that's smaller than you uh, it basically means that you cannot move any further because any element that's to the left of that smaller element will can only be smaller right so you keep moving left until you encounter the first uh, smaller element, then you will treat that as an insertion point. Right, so if you just keep moving and you move to be the very first element, that's also a natural place where you can stop. It simply means that you are, uh, you are the smallest among like the currently processed element to the left. So uh, the new key then will be the next item, right? So you will continue this until you have processed the whole list. So very precise description. With that, then we can use our Python program uh, to implement that as an algorithm, right? So this is exactly what we are looking for. Let's use this hand of card to illustrate how it works. So initially, this is the first step. Uh, this follows the, uh, uh, the hand of the card that you have just seen previously. Uh, the blue part indicate the part of the list that's fully sorted, while the, uh, the red element 
uh, indicates the key that we are currently processing. We are finding a place to insert. So the first step, uh, 9 is considered sorted. Uh, you process the key of Q, pick it up, try to move to the left hand side. Uh, immediately you encounter an element 9, which is smaller. So you, you stop. So Q is being inserted. The next one, you pick up A. Again, you try to move to the left. Immediately you encounter a smaller element Q. So you stop. Now you pick up the third one, the, uh, yeah, the third uh, element that you try to process, which is J. Uh, is J smaller than A? So you can move. J smaller than Q, can you, you can still move. But then J is actually greater than 9, right? So you will stop. In that case, you can see that J is now inserted in between uh, the uh, original element 9 and Q. Okay, so you finish this, then you process the last element. Again, uh, K is being compared to A, it's uh, actually smaller, so you move left. Uh, K is greater than Q, so this is the right place. You insert K down, so it's going to be inserted between Q and A. Right, so you can see that at the final step, all the elements will be colored to be blue, indicating that the whole list is fully sorted. So uh, if you look at, again, the same place, uh, you, you will find either online or offline uh, the, uh, the function called iSort. Right? So this is the function that uh, we use to implement the idea we have just talked about over here. Uh, the main function iSort is actually very simple. It implement our idea. I start from 1, which is the second element, and we process all the way from i all the way until the end of the, um, the array variable, right? And for each and every element, we will try to move to be as left as we can. Uh, here, of course, this is not a built-in Python function. We still need to implement this operation of move left. Uh, so we will indicate uh, in, the, uh, in the next few slides about how this can be done. Right, so this is the example again, more example to illustrate how it works uh, because we want to come up with the design of the algorithm, right? So we need to know more detail. Uh, so this is how uh, if we represent everything following Python's notation, Python's uh, principle, uh, how uh, if we are just monitoring a particular step during this particular loop, how does this uh, insertion sort look like? Uh, here, this is one artificial example, let's say i equals 3, uh, which means that you are processing element 5 at the moment. And then, uh, which means that everything to the left from 0 to 2, they are already sorted. Everything to the right are waiting to be processed. So what we do is that we pick up the key, which is 5, we scan left, we compare against 9, compare against 8, we compare against 0 then we will do the insertion right in between 0 and 5 right so that will be the right place to insert this particular element 5 right so we insert 5 put it down then you see that everything from 0 to 3 are now sorted previously it's only from 0 to 2 so we our sorted region are now being expanded the next location will be i equals 4 and we will continue from that point so if we repeat the whole process, you can see that eventually we will reach the final place. And then after we, uh, we are at i equals 6, we finish that step, the whole list should be fully sorted. Right? So if you want to look at some sorting algorithm animations, uh, you can visit this particular website. I think during the actual class time, uh, we will spend some time working over this two I think, very useful uh, website. Right, so we go back to the implementation. Previously, we look at this I sort method. Inside it, we have this sub function move left. This is where the major action actually happened. Uh, you are given a particular array, right? This is the uh, the current partially sorted array, and then uh, we are indicating that we are processing the element of I. So uh, we just want to just move this element I to be as left as possible until. The moment that we have encountered a particular element in front of us that is smaller than us right okay so this is how we do it uh, so while uh, we have two conditions while i is still greater than zero 
means that we have not reached the reached the, uh, the beginning of the list yet. Then we will compare the uh, array i, the current the current position, and the previous position. If the current position is actually smaller than the previous position, it means that we can um, we can legally exchange this two element, right? So we will do a swapping. So this statement over here, right? So this is the short form for swapping. Uh, means that you take the right hand side and then you write it to the left hand side, right? So this is a swap. You take i minus one and i. Uh, for the element i minus one, right? You replace its content. You you uh, copy its content to i. And for the element that's at uh, the the index i, you copy it to 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 the location of i minus one. And this will keep happen. This is the swapping will keep happen until eventually you reach the beginning of the list, uh, in which case i will equal zero. But as long as i is still greater than zero, uh, you still have element in front of you, and the element in front of you is actually greater than you, then you should be able to move to the left. Okay, so every time we make a call it means that we have expanded the sorted region by one space, right? So I will now be, uh, the range up to I will now be sorted, right? And because of that, is uh, very similar to linear search. So again, uh, now we have introduced this helper function. We are ready to trace the actual program. Uh, if you want to just execute a function, you can use this Colab notebook. But I would highly recommend that you copy both the I sort and move lab function to Python tutor. And then you can use uh, some small example like the one that we provided over here. Try to observe uh, what actually happened. And here are some pointer uh, to like really what are the other uh, places that you should actually watch for. Right. So I mean, if you repeat this multiple times, it should help you understand how this particular algorithm works. So uh, one way to actually remove the, the use of the, the helper function is simply to copy the content of the helper function into the main function. You will make the main function more complicated, of course, less readable, but it will make the analysis, I think, easier, right? Just to help you appreciate uh, the analysis that we are about to do. So here you can see that the outer loop Right, this is the main function inside original function inside the I sort uh, implementation. But inside here, right, the second while loop uh, is actually the uh, provided by the move lab function. Right, so this is actually what the move lab function do. While your, I mean, this J is actually the other uh, element that you try to process. Right, uh, it will equal to I initially. So while J is still greater than zero, and then array j is less than uh, this array j minus one then you'll keep uh, swapping to the left hand side right and every every time you finish this you will increase i's value by one until eventually you reach the final element okay so now we can uh full uh, we have the full picture we can now analyze the complexity uh, the diagram on the right hand side help us to visualize because uh, on the previous page uh, you see that it, again is a nested loop. Uh, outer loop controls i, inner loop controls j. And for each and every i value, again this is our preferred way of analyzing the complexity. Uh, for the row over here, we try to uh, write down all the possible i value and for each and every i value we note down what are the possible j value this dot over here represents the possible j value right so when i value uh, i's value equals one uh, if you go back to the previous slides uh, you can see that j's value uh, will appear exactly one time right just go back to the previous one right your j actually equals i and then j's value can only uh, will, will actually go down uh, the smallest will be actually one right it cannot go uh, lower than one okay so if you look at it uh, it will occupy exactly one spot 
and then for the i value equals to two you will have two spot right you will go from two to one uh, but basically that's it when you reach zero it has to terminate right so you continue the process you can see that the largest i which is n minus one means that your j will go from n minus one all the way until one so in total if you count the numbers of spots which is the execution of the innermost statement you will appear n minus one times right so again over here you can see that this is some of uh, the summation of all the dots will be the summation of the uh, the sum of the uh, arithmetic series right so we follow the formula this is the sum of arithmetic series and if we pick only the dominating term it will be n square right so eventually the, the coefficient does not matter so i think one question uh, i think that's really helpful uh, to answer is that try to think about the case where this worst case happened right uh, we talk about this uh, analysis as a worst case analysis but when will it happen think about that right so we i mean during the class we have we can have more discussion right so now uh if you want to see an, an animated version of this i sort algorithm i will encourage you just follow the statement over here you can actually just import the function from this file offline file that we provide then you will see the animation of the sorting insertion sort of this particular array over here Okay, so in terms of scalability, uh, we have an n square performance, right? So for small or even like a large like list, uh, n square probably doesn't matter um, even our laptop. But uh, just keep in mind, numbers of operation grow pretty fast. And this is a typical uh, like diagram, typical curve that's demonstrated by an n square algorithm right so for really large lists uh we could run into a serious computational issue all right so to cap this particular session right as an exercise try to uh, find the numbers of comparison operation when you are using insertion sort right use two different uh one smaller list and one slightly larger list try to be very accurate Right, accurately come up with the numbers of comparison that will need that you will need to execute. Not the worst case scenario, but the actual numbers of comparison. So we'll review the solution in a separate video.